This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 264, How to Fight the Tired Parent Syndrome, part one, by Dan Schmidt with nerdfitness.com. Ciao, amico. Glad you're here again. As you know, I narrate relationship posts every Monday through Friday with author permission. Today, I've actually got a parenting post with tips to fight through tired parent syndrome. Talon has never been a great sleeper, so Lee and I can totally relate with parents who've been through this. And we know just how desperate and lonely it can feel at times. But it's also nice to hear from other parents who've been through it too. I, for one, would love to hear your experience, and I'm sure there are plenty of other parents who feel the same in our Facebook group. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in Facebook to join. But for now, let's hear Dan's tips and start optimizing your life. How to Fight the Tired Parent Syndrome, Part 1, by Dan Schmidt with NerdFitness.com. Creating and shaping a little one's life is full of wonder, amazement, joy, and smells. A journey which is truly gratifying and, unfortunately, bloody tiring. Any parent will tell you that as soon as player two or three enters the game, the sleep level difficulty instantly shifts from tutorial to expert. It's no surprise that you see new parents in the office stumbling around like zombies by the time 2 p.m. comes around. New parents have to learn to function on much less sleep, which is why we're going to delve into this topic a little further with some tips specifically for rebels with young ones, but with some sleep tips applicable to everyone. Let's pick up the master controller to our slumber and try to help all you struggling parents, shift workers, students, and Fallout 4 players. Engage in multiplayer mode. Child used tire. It's super effective. If you and your partner really feel burnt out or you're a single parent and you're struggling, I have one big message for you. Ask for help. Let go of the feeling that asking for help is some epic inconvenience or that you'll no longer be this self-sufficient superhero. Even Batman needs Robin. Asking partners, family, or friends to take your little one out for a walk or just keep an eye on them while you have a moment's rest can be the difference between getting through a week with energy and struggling to the end of a week feeling exhausted. If you're lucky enough to have a partner or someone who can help out, try taking turns settling or feeding overnight. And work with what best fits your sleep type. Couples, talk to each other. So many parents I've worked with have been struggling for so long because they simply haven't spoken with their partner about their needs. Feel like you're a night person and you're always exhausted when you feed the baby in the morning? A short conversation could really make a huge impact. I think I'd be better off putting the baby to bed and feeding at night if you can do the morning feed and let me sleep until 7. What do you think? Figure out what you both want, try a few things out, and come to an agreement on what works best for both of you. My wife and I found a way to take advantage of my night owl tendencies by expressing the milk beforehand and storing it safely. I stayed up late like normal, allowing my wife to go to bed early, and I covered the 2 a.m. feed. Even if you don't have kids, this is a great strategy for couples or roommates to divide responsibilities. What responsibilities and chores can you divide to work to your advantage, allowing you to rest when you need it? Do less, be better. At the end of the day, you can't do it all. Most days I go about doing everything I can, pretending I'm a Superman, but in the end, we're all just Clark Kent. If we're feeling like we've been exposed to kryptonite, we won't be able to effectively look after our little ones or get the things done that need doing. Sometimes our expectations of ourselves are simply too high. We make a list of things to do that is unrealistic. As parents especially, but also for anyone who feels like they just never have time, making hard choices and prioritizing what's important can help take the pressure off while improving your overall output. We all like to think that we can play with the kids, get them dressed, go to work, cook an amazing dinner, clean the house, get the ironing done, put the kids to sleep, go to the gym, and play just 15 minutes of our favorite video game in between everything else going on in our lives. But as parents and busy people of all varieties, we need to accept that our lives are different now, and we need to let go of certain things that might not be as important anymore. Try picking a few things out of your week to stop doing so you can focus on what's really important to you. It may feel weird at first, but you'll be able to focus on the big wins and accept that you're not going to be able to fit everything from your old schedule in your new life. Move more. But I'm already so tired and you expect me to move more? I know it's a really tough ask, but it's been shown that physical activity can actually increase your energy levels, make you feel better, and even increase the quality of the little sleep that you do get. 
As parents, we're usually short on time, so the easiest way to get moving more is to sneak light exercise into everyday activities. This could be a walk with your child to somewhere nearby that you would usually drive to, rolling around on the floor with them, or some roughhousing. For non-parents and parents alike, try to complete some smaller, move more quests, like taking the stairs instead of the elevator, walking the long way, or dancing in your house when you're just hanging out or cooking a meal. Movement really matters. Think of this like a small investment in your day. You pay in a little movement up front, but you'll start to notice that these tweaks will pay dividends in your energy and mood. It's amazing how these small movements add up to not only help you get through the day, but in turn help you sleep better and set you up for success the next day. It's a cycle of awesome. Steve shared some great tips on how to stay active when you have a family if you're looking for a more complete guide. You just listened to part one of the post titled, How to Fight the Tired Parent Syndrome by Dan Schmidt with nerdfitness.com. And while my admiration for my son is boundless, as you already know, sleeping well has never been one of his strong suits. Talon woke up multiple times a night for the first 13 months of his life. He's two now, and he still wakes up an average of one time per night. Not to mention, he's pretty restless and has a hard time unwinding at the end of the night. Honestly, we've researched and tried everything with this guy. Consistent sleep routines, gentle forms of sleep training, no blue light after a certain hour, white noise, various temperatures in the house, different style pajamas, you name it. But he still wakes up crying for me early in the middle of the night. He doesn't want milk or water, he doesn't want food, he just wants me early to hold him. And to be honest, I've stressed myself out and lost way too much sleep over this sleep thing and trying to adhere to societal norms. And I probably would still be fretting over the situation if it weren't for a shift in my perspective after the sudden death of my mom's really good friend's 21-year-old son. Seeing my mom's friend struggle to hold it together as her baby lay in a coffin because a driver turned prematurely into traffic really made me think about my so-called problems. I came home that night after the funeral without changing into pajamas, crawled into bed with Talon, and held him the rest of the night. I realized after that night I'm done worrying over what I can't control. We can keep doing our best to continue implementing a consistent sleep routine, but I truly believe that everything else will eventually fall into place with time. Not every child is going to be a perfect sleeper from the get-go, and it's just not worth stressing or worrying about it in the meantime. I'm not saying that it's not trying because I know it can be, but I'm just saying by having a simple shift in perspective, maybe it'll help you see things through a more positive lens and embrace the small things like all the snuggles that won't last forever. Anyways, I'd love to hear your stories, so please share them in our Facebook group. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for part two of this post, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more, from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.